here we are again. It's been an interesting day. The Dow Jones closed 1,000 points down. Uh, that, that's always uh, a bit of fireworks in the background. So anyway, I thought, well, rather than look at the stocks and bonds, I'll make some videos. And um, I've had quite a few requests, so I'll, I'll try to make a few videos in, in uh, one session here. And the first one, a uh, uh, viewer whose name is The Juice uh, contacted me more than once, wanted to know about handguns. And so I pulled out the um, FN57, which is probably uh, my favorite centerfire handgun, and uh, I should say pistol. And um, anyway, what can I say about handguns? I have a few. Some people have written me over time asking why I don't do more with handguns. Uh, a couple of reasons. They're, they're, of course, interesting and a lot of fun to shoot. Very compact, easy to store, uh, easy to feed. The ammunition is not that expensive. And, um, but when compared to rifles or shotguns, there's just not that much variety with with handguns of course there are countless models uh, and one can buy nine millimeter or 45 or what have you but i bought the 5.7 uh, primarily because of the ballistic properties of the of the 5.7 ammo which i have on the table here and uh, this what is this this is 40 grain fn i think i have some some uh some hornady somewhere actually this says hornady bullets but i think that's the v-max bullet in this FN ammo. Anyway, um, 40 grains, it's 2,000 plus feet per second. I put out some some ammo for comparison. That's an old 455 Webley. I have that revolver. Uh, that's 357 SIG. I don't know why I put this out. 762 by 39, that's SKSAK food. And 223, and then the 5.7. So you got a really small bullet at high velocity. And um, the hit probability is quite high with this handgun, plus it has a 20 round magazine, um, which I can put here. So you've got 20 shots, and even if you're not a very good shot, you'll probably hit something. There's not much recoil because it's a, a small bullet moving very quickly. Uh, the bullet, uh, sorry, the, the handgun is fully modern. Everything's a polymer. I kind of contradict myself. You'd think I'd like a... Uh, a steel and, and wood sig or something like that. Um, but something about this caught my eye and, and I had watched some YouTube videos and people were pulling off hits at, at long distance and the, the low recoil really appealed to me. With my Colt I can hit you know some of the time. With my Beretta I can hit most of the time. But we're talking about fairly close ranges. So with the 5.7 I thought maybe I can do better um, and other than, than the features of the cartridge and the handgun itself, um, it's probably worth mentioning, maybe some of you have noticed that I have a bit of a tremor in my, in my wrists, uh, which is a funny thing to talk about. Uh, but I try to be forthright about stuff like that. And I had, you know, all the tests for Parkinson's and what have you that, that, that they do. Um, and they're, it's a complicated story. But the tremor does affect my handgun shooting. So while I take them out, um, uh, no, it's a hit and miss proposition, no pun intended. If, if the tremor is bad, uh, then, then the shooting's quite bad, and it seems to be out of, my, out of my control. This doesn't affect my shotgun shooting and rifle shooting at all, which is kind of strange. Uh, but with a handgun, it's quite evident. So anyway, I have handguns, and the mechanisms are always interesting to me. And I had some people, switching subjects now, uh, I had some people, some, some uh, junior shooters, ask me about why the barrel tips on the center fires and not on the rim fires. So uh, this is the Browning design. By the way, this is striker fired. Uh, it, you, you know that because there's no hammer sticking out the back like there would be on a 1911. It has an ambidextrous safety. It's easy takedown. All the features are just routine pistol features, which you can watch lots of YouTube videos on. So I'll set this um, handgun down and getting back to those questions about why the barrel tips and all that. So I pulled out this Buckmark, which is a 22. 
so not much power. Um, so when this, when you fire this, well, this is a rifle, obviously, but you can see that the buckmark pistol is is here. So when you fire this, this bolt is blown back. That's called a straight blowback. Really easy to understand. As you know, the principle is uh, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So as the bullet goes down the barrel, this moves backward. But the weight of this bolt, along with the spring that's being compressed, um, offsets the momentum of the bullet moving forward. And then you can fire again. And too bad um, that center fire handguns can't be so simple. But you have to do something to slow down the slide when the cartridge goes off because it has a lot more power than a 22 long rifle. So Browning came up with the idea that, well, you have to find weight and resistance somewhere. And yet you, you want your handgun to be uh, light and compact. So you can't add weights. There were different rifles. I'm thinking of the Winchester 401 where they offset the power of the cartridge with a heavy weight in the rifle but you can't do that in a handgun and anyway the you know rifle gets too heavy too so what did he do he designed it in such a way that the barrel and the slide lock together so that when when you fire this handgun um, this unit moves back as one piece barrel and slide are locked together um, after they've moved backwards a short distance the barrel separates from the slide by tipping down. And I'm oversimplifying things and there are many variations on this system. Uh, but that was the original and it's probably easiest to understand by looking at a, a Colt uh, 1911. And there are lots of those videos to look at. So kind of an unextraordinary handgun except for the materials that, that it's made of, which I said are polymer except of course the springs and the barrel. Um, You've got a generous magazine capacity, almost no recoil, a bullet that's traveling well over 2,000 feet per second. Um, some, somebody told me I spent way too much money and I should have just bought a Caltech 22 Magnum semi-auto uh, because the ballistics aren't that far apart. I, I didn't study that whole issue. Um, maybe that's a good idea. I, I wanted a center fire and um, the bullet weights are similar and the velocities are probably similar as well. But I think this cartridge has other capabilities. So anyhow, that, that was um, what I wanted to share with you. Juice, I think it's excellent. Uh, no problem. On a good day when, when my wrists are working, uh, hitting at distances, they're actually unbelievable for a handgun. And I'll just set it down on this side so the cameraman can focus on, on the... On the uh, pistol itself. The sights are good. Uh, it, it's uh, very easy to shoot very well with the 5.7 and it might be a little expensive uh, but you know I always think one lives uh, once and there are a lot of 9 mils around, 45s of every kind and lots of other handguns. Uh, but this, this is um, quite unique, uh, at, at least the cartridges and I think the pistol is as well. The grip might be a little bit big for some people just because the round is, is, um, is longer than a lot of pistol cartridges. So not too much to say, but at least I said something. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you again.